Alibaba is one of the most talked about and most controversial stocks in the entire stock market, and for pretty good reason. It sits in the portfolio of phenomenally successful investors like Charlie Munger through the Daily Journal Corporation, and it's a business that's experienced a lot of headwinds in the past year or two, which have resulted in very substantial declines in the Alibaba stock price. And uh, just in the last week or so, Alibaba reported their earnings for the quarter ending June 30th, 2022, and it has been a really tough quarter for Alibaba. This quarter kind of fell right in the middle of China's very tough COVID policies with aggressive lockdowns. And it's pretty interesting to dive into how that actually impacted the business of Alibaba. So in this video, initially, I want to share some of the highlights from Alibaba's earnings and some of the key numbers around revenue and earnings and so on. And for the second half of this video, I want to cover uh, some of the key takeaways that I got out of Alibaba's webcast or conference call related to their earnings. So if you're not familiar, Alibaba do a webcast uh, every quarter where they talk through some of their key financial results, different initiatives that they've got going on uh, in the business that usually runs for about 30 minutes. And then following that, there's about an hour long Q&A session with various analysts that follow the company. And I find that some of the most valuable bits of information around Alibaba's quarterly performance often come out of those conference calls. So I want to share some highlights from me uh, from that part of Alibaba's earnings release as well. Now, just to give some of the initial backdrop in terms of the environment in which Alibaba has operated for this last quarter, uh, this is what the company had to say. They said, during the past quarter, we actively adapted to changes in the macro environment and remain focused on our long-term strategy by continuing to strengthen our capability for customer value creation, said Daniel Zhang, chairman and CEO of Alibaba Group. Following a relatively slow April and May, we saw signs of recovery across our businesses in June. We are confident in our growth opportunities in the long term, given our high quality consumer base and the resilience of our diversified business model catering to different demands of our customers. Despite the challenges posed by the COVID-19 resurgence, we delivered stable revenue performance year over year. We've narrowed losses in key strategic businesses, given ongoing improvements in operating efficiency and increasing focus on cost optimization, said Tony Zhu, CFO of Alibaba Group. We recently shared our plan to add Hong Kong as another primary listing venue by becoming primary listed on both Hong Kong and New York stock exchanges. We aim to further expand and diversify our investor base. Now, in terms of some of the key numbers that came out of Alibaba, uh, here's where they sat. And Alibaba report their financials both in RMB and also US dollars. So I'll give you some of the US dollar numbers. Now, revenue came in at $30.689 billion, which was basically flat year over year. Uh, it was tr primarily due to a decline in China commerce segment revenue by 1% and offset slightly by revenue growth in cloud of about 10% year over year. Income from operations decreased 19% year over year. Net income attributable to ordinary shareholders was down 30% year over year. And it's important to note that in that net income figure, uh, that's actually down more than the income from operations. And that's because uh, Alibaba does have several investments in other companies. And basically using the equity method uh, in accounting, the decrease in value of some of those companies that Alibaba is a shareholder in flows to a decrease in net income for the company. So um, sometimes the net income can look better than the operations of Alibaba if their investments are doing well. Uh, in this quarter, the investments have done Done poorly, they've gone down in value, so that pulls net income down more than operating income. So um, that is where net income sat. Earnings per share was down 29% year over year, and net cash provided by operating activities increased 1% year over year. Uh, they also reported free cash flow, which was up about 7% year over year. Now, this was clearly a pretty rough quarter for Alibaba. This is a business that historically has grown at something like 50% a year. Uh, it's been a very, very fast growing business the last decade. When I first invested in the company, I sort of looked at some of their long-term targets for annual active customers and what uh, the average spend of those customers has been over time. And I was kind of estimating that Alibaba can probably generate about 12% growth in revenue moving forward and 
I assumed that would flow through to similar cash flows and earnings and so on. So um, to see Alibaba basically have flat revenue and declining uh, operating income and net income is clearly not a great sign. But of course, as long-term investors, we try not to read too much into a single quarter, particularly at a time where there was some very challenging kind of macro conditions for Alibaba. But nonetheless, uh, there are certainly a few things that we're gonna have to keep an eye on moving forward. Now, in some of the prepared remarks from Alibaba in their conference call, there are a few things that uh, I kind of noted down that I thought would be interesting to share in this video to give you, again, a bit more context around some of the factors driving Alibaba's recent business performance. Now, uh, Daniel Zhang, the CEO, said that it has been a tough quarter. GDP growth in China for this quarter was the lowest it's been since 2020, which, again, uh, is due to some of the uh, kind of COVID restrictions and, and various factors that have been happening in China. Uh, they saw Taobao and Tmall, which are their main Chinese e-commerce platforms, have a decline uh, in business you know, throughout that period of time where there was harsh lockdowns and so on. Um, but they did say that since lockdowns have started to ease, they've seen recovery and they expect that uh, uh, July will be better than June and uh, August will be better than July. So since restrictions have eased and the quarter has ended, they are expecting to see improvements in sales. And we should hopefully see that uh, the next time that Alibaba reports their quarterly earnings. Now, to me, it's really interesting to hear an e-commerce business talk about struggling with those types of conditions. If we think back to the lockdowns of 2020 in the US, that was actually prime time to be an e-commerce business. Um, you know, people were obviously going outside and, um, you know, purchasing at physical stores less and less. So they tended to purchase more stuff online. And I was surprised to hear a little bit that Alibaba was finding it difficult with, you know, the harsh restrictions and things that were going on. It sounds like a lot of the main challenges were actually to do with logistics and just not being able to fill orders. Uh, Alibaba has a logistics arm called Kai now, and uh, there were clearly some challenges that that arm of the business experienced with uh, some of the restrictions that were happening. A really classic example of that is Ulama, which is one of the uh, food delivery businesses. They just couldn't get the people to basically do food delivery and that part of the company had a pretty significant revenue hit. Moving on now to competition, of course, uh, Alibaba is a massive leader in many areas of e-commerce in China, but there is a lot of competition from uh, the likes of JD.com, from Pinduoduo, and from a number of smaller players, depending on what part of Alibaba's business you're looking at. Um, but they did mention that Alibaba does have scale and they have had a history of growing consumer mindshare. This is an idea that we always hear the likes of Buffett and Munger talk about when it comes to companies like Coca-Cola, when they uh, go to get a drink out of a fridge at a store or whatever. Uh, you know, there is some mindshare element that uh, consumers kind of already have an idea of when they walk into that store, they might be more likely to purchase a Coca-Cola product than some product they've never heard of because they're thinking about it um, you know, more often. It's a well-known brand, they've purchased before, they kind of know what to expect in terms of uh, customer experience. And in many ways, it's similar with e-commerce. When you go to a site like Amazon, for example, in the US, you kind of know what that experience is gonna be like. And again, similar kind of idea with Alibaba in China. So um, they said that they do have kind of a focus on continuing to grow that mindshare. And a lot of that comes by uh, really serving a lot of their higher spending customers very, very well. And although uh, treating consumers well is one part of it, you also have to look at the other side of the equation for Alibaba. So in many ways, Alibaba is kind of a middleman between uh, the customer and also between the people selling products and running uh, kind of their businesses through an Alibaba platform. So they're looking to continue expanding the tools that uh, merchants basically have available to, to run and operate their businesses efficiently. And the last sort of macro condition that I'll cover in this video uh, is to do with the Russia-Ukraine situation. Uh, Russia is actually a reasonably significant business for Alibaba's uh, online uh, e-commerce platform, AliExpress, uh, that was about a $10 billion uh, per year revenue type business for Alibaba. Uh, and they have since laid off about 40% of their staff in Russia with everything that's going on. So there was a bit of a hit to the business from um, that situation as well. 
Moving now to talk about Alibaba Cloud. Uh, this is one of the really fast growing elements of Alibaba's business. And it's a part of the business that a lot of people are really excited about. Of course, we've seen the likes of Amazon start out as an e-commerce platform and then kind of out of nowhere grow this huge Amazon Web Services cloud platform. And there's a lot of people that I guess are hoping that Alibaba Cloud can pull off the same kind of uh, pull off the same kind of miracle and and have this huge growth uh, and hugely profitable kind of software as a service business. And um, Alibaba Cloud was uh, growing a lot slower than it has done in previous quarters. So uh, year over year growth was about ten percent. They had a few different reasons that they listed for that. They said, um, you know, just kind of the things generally going on in the economy and with COVID restrictions and so on. They kind of just said macro has been a headwind. They also said that they had a decrease in revenue from their top customer. And this is something that has been listed a few times. Uh, I believe that Alibaba's largest customer is ByteDance, which is the owner of TikTok. And uh, I believe TikTok have been moving towards American platforms. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong on that. But I believe that's the main reason for a decrease in spending from the top customers, that ByteDance is probably moving towards one of the American cloud providers. So um, they did list that. They also said that there's simply decreased demand from internet companies uh, in this quarter. And uh, there's a delay in some of their hybrid cloud projects, again, as a result of lockdown. They have uh, just haven't been able to get as much new technology out the door as they had initially hoped. A couple of interesting positive aspects from the cloud business though is that they noted that 53% of their revenue now comes from non-internet companies. So we're seeing traditional industries uh, take up cloud services and implement those things in their businesses. Um, and that 53% of revenue from non-internet companies compares to only 48% at the same time last year. And they also noted that they've had uh, continued significant growth in DingTalk, which is kind of the Chinese equivalent of a tool like Slack in the US, if anyone's familiar with Slack, is kind of a internal communications and file sharing type tool. Now in terms of cash and kind of financial health for Alibaba, uh, even with all the headwinds that they've had in this last quarter, they still produced about 3.3 billion US dollars in free cash flow. Uh, they actually put about 3.5 billion dollars towards sherry purchases and buybacks. Now uh, there is kind of an equity incentive um, or stock-based compensation program at Alibaba. So a lot of those buybacks do kind of go towards just offsetting those compensation arrangements. But nonetheless, it is nice to see that the share count is uh, lower than it would be otherwise if we didn't have the share repurchases. And uh, Alibaba still have about 50.8 billion US dollars in net cash. And if it wasn't enough of a perfect storm for Alibaba this last quarter already, uh, they also did have a couple of other kind of macro challenges. Firstly, the uh, yuan has been a very strong currency, especially uh, relative to things like the euro. It's up about 10% um, year to date versus the euro. So that doesn't help kind of the attractiveness of uh, Alibaba's product pricing for European consumers. And uh, there's also been some interesting changes to uh, European sales taxes or, or VAT, V-A-T as, as they call it in Europe, where those sale taxes now have to be applied to products under 22 euros that come from outside the European Union. And obviously, uh, again, platforms like AliExpress do a lot of business below that 22 euro price point. Traditionally, there hasn't been any sales tax uh, kind of attached to those types of you know products that AliExpress might be selling into Europe, um, and sales tax is now applied under that 22 euro threshold. So um, again, that hasn't been particularly helpful for Alibaba's business. And just to give you an idea of how meaningful that is, um, VAT taxes are generally around 21% is about the average in Europe from uh, me doing a little bit of research online, uh, and the regulation requires at least 15% for uh, countries in the European. Union. Now, like I mentioned towards the beginning of the video, a pretty big chunk of Alibaba's webcast each quarter is a QA session. So, here are a handful of highlights that I got out of uh, that QA part of the webcast or the conference call. Um, it's always nice to hear what types of questions analysts are asking. They're generally very familiar with the business and uh, it allows management to give uh, a bit more kind of commentary on, on certain issues than we might have been able to 
get kind of otherwise. So um, they did talk about an interesting way that they basically viewed the true value of Alibaba's business. They said over time they have really focused on growing the number of annual active customers and they now have over a billion annual active customers only in China. Uh, they have a little more than that if you look globally. Um, but they said that they really want to move from annual active customer growth to uh, annual spend per customer growth. I guess you could make some comparisons here to a company like uh, Facebook or Meta where they have a huge number of uh, kind of daily active and monthly active users on the platform and the way they've been able to grow is by increasing the amount of ad revenue that they generate from each daily or monthly active user on a Facebook platform. So a similar concept here that Alibaba are trying to pull off with uh, basically selling more product to each annual active customer in China and globally. They spoke again about the mind share that Alibaba has with those annual active customers and they actually said that uh, they believe consumer mind share is their most valuable asset and they did quote some monthly active uh, user and daily active user stats and said um, that those have been pretty stable in recent times even given a lot of the headwinds that have been going on. Uh, and finally, they talked a little bit more about cloud and kind of the long term prospects for that business. They said that uh, from a kind of high level macro perspective, if you compare China to other parts of the world, IT expenditure as a percentage of GDP is significantly lower than the US and other developed countries. They also said that digitalization is a structural long term trend. It's not some sort of uh, short term cycle where everyone's suddenly wanting to go digital. It is a long term trend that Alibaba will benefit from. Uh, and I thought I'd do a little bit of digging just into what the market share dynamics kind of look like for the cloud business in China currently, because uh, Alibaba still have the highest market share in terms of the cloud providers in China, but there's been some pretty significant changes. Huawei specifically have taken a lot of market share in the past year or so, uh, and Alibaba currently sit at about 37% market share as far as I can tell. That is down a little. They were up at 46% a couple of years ago. There are other cloud providers, of course, like Huawei, like I mentioned, uh, Tencent is in the mix as well. And uh, that will be something that I will be watching pretty closely, I think. Uh, personally, I'm viewing the cloud business at Alibaba as a little bit of kind of a free lottery ticket type element of the investment case where I think we're getting a pretty attractively priced uh, e-commerce business. Do your own work on that. Don't take my word for it. Um, but we're getting a potential kind of other growth engine from cloud on the side. So um, just to kind of keep an eye on the health of that business, I think it is important to watch some of those market share trends. So there you have it. That is an update on Alibaba's most recent uh, quarterly earnings. It was a very rough macro backdrop for Alibaba this quarter. And it's going to be interesting to see how they recover moving into the next quarter. And hopefully they can return to some long term kind of growth after that. So I do hope you enjoyed the video if you did please hit like and also subscribe to the channel if you are new here let me know any thoughts on this recent update from alibaba down in the comment section below that's it from me for this one and i'll see you in the next video cheers